for joining us. Hey friends, welcome and thank you for joining us. Today we are here with a very special gal. Her name is Julie Ciardi. We're so excited she is joining us today to share her heart and vision for women all across the board, whether you are a stay-at-home mom or corporate growl or anything in between. Um, but as we have mentioned before, this is how the three of us have met, is through Julie Ciardi and her incredible community. Yes. Julie, you have been such an influential coach and mentor to all of us in our personal and business development. Um, Julie is a foreman, former Fortune 500 marketing vice president turned entrepreneur, but she's on a mission to help thousands of women design their life in a way that honors their true passions. So Sarah, let's jump right in. Thanks so much, Julie, for being here. I'm so excited. Um, one of the things that attracted me to you initially was uh, where your journey started and the fact that you came from corporate, you understand that lifestyle, um, and you also felt the, the pull to do something greater. So can you just kind of go into a little bit about what made you start thinking bigger than, than just your corporate life? Yes, absolutely. And thank you so much for having me here. It's such an honor. And I'm so excited for what you're doing because so many more women need to hear these messages. So well done. And thank you. So yeah, you know, it's funny because for me, it was this idea for a very long time. And when I say long time, I mean, like a solid 18 years. It was a someday. And it would rear its head. And in fact, it's so funny. There is a, there's a guy, he still works there at the Fortune 500 I was in. And he was like, remember, like you wanted to start a flower shop. I'm like, I know, like I had all these ideas. I, I was going, but at the time, the world we live in today didn't exist. So 18 years ago, just to set the stage, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you know, I, had, have, I was having my first child and it was like babycenter.com was all there was. There was no social media. There were no groups. There was nothing, nothing out there. I don't think Google was around, right? Nothing was around. So for me, the idea to leave corporate and do my own thing was it would have to be a brick and mortar something. I thought I was either going to open a gym, a flower shop, a boutique. I was going to have to like, you know, go and do something along those lines. And so it kind of was just that it seemed very risky. I didn't know all the hows. And so it just kind of stayed out there as the someday thing. And, you know, a short 18 years later, it really like became this burning desire. And I think mm -hmm. for anyone listening, you know, so when good. something becomes a burning desire, you can't not pay attention. If you don't pay attention and you start sweeping it under the rug when it's a burning desire, well, it's going to cause a fire under the rug, right? You're going to, it's going to cause you discomfort. You're going to have regrets. You're going to wish that you had followed that burning desire. Trust me. And so when you get that burning desire, you know, you have no choice but to start the process of making it a reality. And I wish it was a, you know, more exciting than that. But really, it was a moment where it switched from being someday, maybe something I would do to this mm -hmm. has to happen. And it became that burning desire. And that's what that's what started the whole the whole movement. That's and what awesome, gave Julie. you what gave you the courage to actually like take that first step? You don't get courage. You step mm -hmm. into courage because here's the thing. We, we have this idea that, well, once I'm not afraid anymore, I'll go and do it. But it's not that way. Mm -hmm. Like courage is doing it even though you have like fear, anxiety, worry. Is this going to work out? I don't really know. Right. I didn't have the answers to all of that. So I think that the thing that I gave me that, that push to step into the courage versus trying to find it was I... I had I'd read a book. It was like powerful. It was right about that time that I had the, the idea became a burning desire. Right about that same time. Again, we start to see things differently when we start to question things. A, a book came into my life and it was the, the top five regrets of the dying uh, by a woman named mm -hmm. Ronnie Ware. who was like a long term, you know, care professional. And she started to see a trend with people that were at the end of their life, whatever those ages. A lot of the people she worked with were older, thank goodness. 
but the trends were the same and the regrets of not pursuing what they wanted to pursue was one of the big ones. And I was like, whoa, like, I don't want to be, you know, 80, 90, God willing, and look back and like wish that I had pursued something. So I think I stepped into courage when I realized the alternative. And sometimes when you think about what's the worst case scenario, what's the alternative? That was when I was like, this has to be done. The worst thing that can happen is I go back to the corporate job. That's the which is where I already won. Mm -hmm. For sure, for sure. Well, I remember, Julie, one of your stories, like always, and we were talking about it when we were conversing about what to ask you and what we'd love you to share. And I loved the story that I think so many mamas can relate to. You were standing in your nursery. Yeah. And that's, that's holding your baby that's and just, whew. yeah, that's when it became a burning desire. I, I think mm -hmm. that it was that same exact, like, few months where this book also came into my life. And I remember I'd had my third child and he's eight now. So I was, you know, it was eight years ago and rocking him in the nursery. And it's literally, I, I can like put myself back in that moment in a heartbeat because it was so palpable. And I can remember I felt terrible because here I have this beautiful little baby boy and I am wondering like, is, is this my purpose? Is this what I meant to be? do here on earth. And not that there's anything wrong. I mean, three beautiful children, so grateful, so thankful. But now I know that that was a higher calling mm -hmm. tapping me on the shoulder, but I didn't know that at the time. And instead I went into that typical mom guilt and thinking, who are you not to be just grateful and thankful for the life that you have right now. You have a successful career. You're making great money. You've got these three amazing children. Like you live in a great house. You're going on great vacations. Like who are you to even start questioning this? And so that's where I was coming from initially. And it was really hard. And I think one of the things I love to help women with is almost through that initial hurdle, because that initial hurdle actually can stop most people in their tracks. It's like, well, who am I, right? I've got all these other responsibilities and my purpose is here to, to be the mom to these kids or the house and the this and the that. And if you get tapped, if you've got this like burning desire, if there's something that's coming up for you, just this, even if it's just this nagging thing of there's something more and you don't even know what it is, that's okay. Just know that it's actually coming from outside of you. It is this like higher you know, source or power, God, whatever you believe, like it's your soul, like kind of calling to you and there's nothing wrong with it. And it doesn't mean you're not going to be an amazing mom and pursue something. And I think that for me now having my kids be older where, you know, Caroline's 18, Jack's 16, and then I've got Kason who's eight. Thank God I kept pursuing things because the impact to them is that much better. I am way better of a mother to the three of them mm. because I chose this path. Uh, they are better off because of the things I'm even teaching and sharing. And mm. as we know how kids are, what they're seeing, right? So what they're seeing is that there's so much possibility out there and that and they, they're learning how to set goals in ways they've never learned before. And it's just the coolest thing. Mm -hmm. So just remember that if you're in that space, there, one, there's nothing wrong with you. That is your soul mm -hmm. talking to the higher purpose ca calling of you. You don't have to know exactly what it is. You just have to start asking yourself questions of what do I want? What does light me up? What, what do I want to do? And just to start to allow those things to unravel versus like stopping it at the gate saying no, but right. I'm a mom. Mm -hmm. I'm missing all these other things and actually have it see that the outcome could also be that you're an even better mom to the kids mm -hmm. than that choice. Yes, it, it is amazing what our kids catch just by our example, for sure. And you know what? They see me happier. Right. So they see that they can have choice to maybe do things their way and have that total support system. And, you know, that, that doesn't have to be the shoulds and the norm of things. Mm -hmm. But 
also they, they see I'm happier, especially my older kids mm -hmm. who remember the mom that dreaded Sunday nights and dreaded, you know, going, you know, having to work in something I didn't love and really like something I want to make mm -hmm. sure is really, really clear because I think this gets confused sometimes is that the only way to be happy and fulfilled in a job or career is if you have your own business. That That's not true at all. Okay. So mm -hmm. I probably could have gone on and, and gone to a small company and done something different that lit me up and had growth and all of the things. So just sharing that because for some people it becomes, and I've been hot on this topic lately of this, it's this either, or it's either you're in a job that you don't love, or you're living this incredible mm -hmm. entrepreneur life where everything is like unicorns and mm -hmm. like, neither is true. <laughs> and you can actually like wake up and dream and have it be in a career. Like, are you talking to me, Julie? I feel like I am. A little <laughs> but I feel like you know, working with you and, and getting to know you mm -hmm. and a ton of other women in our programs, like it almost became well, my only choice. If I'm in a, a job that I don't love, that my only choice is to start my own thing. And that's not true that there are tons of other choices out there as long as you like aren't trying to escape like when we're looking for an escape plan we can mm -hmm. usually make not great choices right because we're like trying to run from the thing but if you're like you know what i don't love this right now but i am so excited to start figuring out what i do want to do mm -hmm. and what want to do it might end up being in another company and that's cool and you too. can create that and design that however you want as well which is is the key point here Totally. Yes, exactly. More to come there from my side anyway. <laughs> That's so awesome. So Julie, tell us a little bit more about um, how your vision is unfolding a little bit. Cause, you know, you went from brick and mortar and you started a coaching business that had one emphasis. Now it's kind of evolving into something even bigger and greater than you probably ever imagined in the very beginning. So, yeah. you know, with the Ignite Her Society and just tell us a little bit more about that and what you have the vision. You know, I'm so glad you asked that question because I think we think we're supposed to know all the steps and how it's all supposed to play out even before we make a jump or a leap. And that's not the case. It's, you know, Steve Jobs has been, you know, he was quoted as saying that, you know, you cannot connect the dots looking forward and towards your goal. You can only connect the dots looking back. And I can say that like is a hundred percent true because looking back now, I'm like, oh my God, it's so, it's almost, there's, there's humor in it to me. And there's like an, of course, to me when I look back in it. Right. So when I look back at myself sitting in corporate going, like I knew for me, I wanted to start my own thing. Like I'm very creative and I wanted to start my own thing. And I, I just, I knew that that was, that was going to be the path for me. I just didn't know exactly what it was going to be. And because of my limiting beliefs at the time, I only knew what I knew then. I still only thought the way that you have your own business was it to be brick and mortar. Just like I talked about feeling for 18 years, I still didn't have enough evidence. I didn't have enough exposure. And I really thought that the only thing I could do in the online space was to like be a marketing consultant to companies, mm -hmm. which I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. That was not, I wasn't interested in that. And so what did I do? I started a brick and mortar boutique, which was a lot of money and a lot of time and all the things. And I loved building it, like building it and the branding and the website and the store and learning. I had never even been a cash. I, I never even checked someone out in a store before. I never worked in a store, any of those things. And I actually didn't have a lot of intention of working in the store either. Like I was going to hire and I just wanted to like, you know, have the vision and all of that. So I did, I built it. We, you know, I started building it in, you know, January of one of 2017. And we opened the doors on small business Saturday of November of 2017. We got the business to six figures. I say we, it was me. I got the business to six <laughs> figures in four months as a one woman show while also still working full time as a vice mm -hmm. president of marketing at a fortune 500 with three children and wow. a her husband who wasn't home a lot. So I don't want, I never take the excuse mm -hmm. <laughs> of there is no time. We make time, we create time. That's, that's baloney. So I, I launched the whole thing and I was like, oh, that was fun. <laughs> and then I do have fun with it, but I was like, oh, 
profit margins aren't exactly mm -hmm. what I thought they were going to be. And I was coming mm -hmm. off a very big, you know, very big job. And I hadn't left yet. I still hadn't left the corporate uh, salary. But I started to see like, this isn't going to do it, right? Like, I'm not going to mm -hmm. be able to make what I was making in corporate owning this. I would have to open multiple and this be a chain and like all that. Mm -hmm. like, no, that was not what I wanted to do. But what was happening at the same time, and this is where it's so important to understand, you take that first step and then the next rung starts to appear of the ladder. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have known this next step unless I did the first thing, right? So I do the boutique, right. I had all these people coming out of the woodwork going, how did you do this? How did you start this? And how are you planning to leave the, 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 uh, the um, mm. day job? And then I left the day job and then people really kind of came out. I was like on podcasts and people like, how are you, how did you do this? And that's when I realized that my mission was much bigger and it was to help mm. more women be happier in what they were doing with their life and being okay mm. with maybe pursuing some things outside of motherhood. And so it kind of, I went and got certified as a, a life coach. I just figured that was the next step. I just kind of kept taking Going. the next step, not knowing exactly where it would pan out. And in that time, and I share this very openly, I sold the boutique. And between the time I sold the boutique, I had left the, the day job for a solid two years, I barely made any money. So for a solid mm. two years, I made almost no money in 2018. And then I made about 45K in 20. Um, 19 and I was primary breadwinner. So that was a big impact on our family, but I wasn't going to give up on this, this goal and dream. Mm -hmm. And so again, just continuing to take the next step, the next step, the next step. And with that persistent, consistent action, kind of the next thing getting revealed, I knew that my purpose here on this earth was to, to coach women, to coach women, to really be able to design a life that they truly mm -hmm. love and to be a torchbearer for their family, their community, their team members, you know, all of the, for, mostly for themselves to, to really design a life that they desire. And I realize a lot of women haven't been taught this or have been taught that it's selfish to do so. And mm -hmm. the exact opposite is the reality. And so, you know, the whole thing morphed into creating a, a, an incredible society for women called Ignite Her Society. And we are launching our own mindset school where we're going to certify That's coaches awesome. and certify people to become mm -hmm. coaches and start their own businesses. Because to me, that's how the torch gets passed even faster. Mm -hmm. If more and more people are helping more and more people, the torch will get passed mm -hmm. farther and farther. And I really believe, like I feel this in my bones, that if more women kind of get woken up gently, we won't shake you too mm -hmm. hard, but like mm -hmm. enough women get woken up, out of the, like, I call it the slumber of should. There's a lot, yeah. a lot on us. You get out of that slumber mm -hmm. of should and you start, mm -hmm. you know, design the life that you desire. Oh my gosh. The the ripple effect on them, on their kids, on mm -hmm. the family, on the world, honestly, and I'm not just like, I'm not being like Pollyanna. I really believe will be dramatic versus the one we're living in right now. Absolutely. I think that's important for women and our listeners to hear that when you're feeling that tug, for something new, something different in your life, that you don't have to have it all planned out. You don't have to have it all figured out. You won't. Right. And how you can evolve. And that's okay by taking just a few steps or sacrifices to kind of figure it out. But I think um, for me personally, too, it was like, well, this is what I always want to do. I always wanted to be a stay at home mom, but that's not working out completely. I wanted a big family. We ended up with one. Um, and then it was like, then he was off to school. Now what? But then I'm supposed to be at home, but I have something else tugging at my heart. And I feel like um, when I was introduced to your program and your coaching environment, if you will, um, it just really opened my eyes to so many possibilities. It wasn't just like you said, you can't, you don't have to be an entrepreneur and then brick and mortar, right? There's so many other things. We're all here. We were, you know, with network marketing and it's now sort of just evolving for even the three of us mm -hmm. sitting here because of you and what you've gone through and what you're teaching. And even your program is involving, you're evolving. And we now have Ignite Her Society, which is super exciting. Because you know why? The reason I made that is that we're so you like think about this for a minute. 
So you just said it to you, right? All the shoulds, you're supposed to be doing this, supposed to be doing that. You know, you might have an mm-hmm. idea and you poo poo it because like, mm-hmm. who am I? And I should be doing all these things. And the problem is that though that those thoughts on the should and all the stuff has been placed in our minds for decades, whether mm-hmm. it's from the experiences mm-hmm. we had as kids to seeing other women, to women in, in the society, to moms at the same school as your kids, right? Like, oh, don't even get me started on that, right? And like all the things, right? And so it's these, these thoughts are pretty hardwired in our brain. Mm-hmm. And so to change them, to have new beliefs and thoughts that I can be an awesome mom and do these things. And mm-hmm. I can say no to this and this because it doesn't serve me. And I can, and you start to take control. Oh my God. It's amazing. But here's the thing. It doesn't happen overnight. And we're so used to the concept that for us to, let's say we, we have like no upper body strength. And we want to get muscle. We want to start getting upper body strength. What do we do? Well, we got to lift weights. And we're mm-hmm. going to have to lift weights probably every day to start to develop the muscles. We get that. We have no problem with that. And we mm-hmm. totally understand that we need to put our bodies in the gym or in movement to change them. How do you change your mind? How mm-hmm. do you change that mm-hmm. most important aspect of your entire being? It's got to be daily. So we need, the the way I look at Ignite Her Society, it's a daily mind gym. 15 to 20 minutes a day minimum, Mm -hmm. especially for people that are kind of new to doing some of this work, will dramatically change how you start to see things. We have women that have never done this work before and they're starting to do this and they're like, like, they're just looking around going, has this been here this whole time and I didn't know it? You know, Mm -hmm. I've been having these negative thoughts about this, this, and this forever. You mean Mm -hmm. I have to <laughs> We're like no like you get to yes. this if you mm-hmm. want but it takes mental practice it takes mm-hmm. mental muscles being lifted mm-hmm. over and over again for that to come to fruition and that is really why we created the ignite her society is you can't just have you know a, a weekly motivational hit and keep going no this has to be daily there's no other mm-hmm. way that's a, you know something that we really need to help people understand they kind of expect you know, that kind of change and that growth to happen overnight, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Mm. So, so good. I know for all of us, we have personally experienced that the benefits of that daily community support, um, it's kind of like, you know, the, the, the shot of goodness coming right in every day as an encouragement. So one of the things that, um, is in your, Ignite Her Society is those daily messages. So would you kind of conclude and wrap us up today by sharing one of your favorite quotes and why you love it? I know you have many. I have many. Yes. And our daily message is that daily exercise, right? Like I have made the commitment. This is how committed I am to this cause. Mm -hmm. I have an audio message that I recorded Every day, every day, like every week, every day, a new one is put in there and it is an audio message from me with a quote, really helping you to get to dramatic shifts and changes in your, in your mind. So I do, I have a lot of quotes. We have one going in there every single day, Mm -hmm. but I think the one that has become literally the mantra for me, I know for many of you, it's a quote you probably love as well, right? Is do not live by accident or default. Mm -hmm live by design. Mm-hmm. And that if that can like start to be if like, really know that quote, as you guys know, we don't just look at cute quotes and share them on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Like we actually dissect them and understand what is really meant because all of these quotes that we put are coming from like, like, like amazing philosophers and coaches mm-hmm. and people that have changed our society over, you know, centuries is where these these quotes are coming from let's really learn and not just think it's something cute to share right so Mm -hmm. embody it so this idea of do not live by accident or default is how most people live that is the should Mm -hmm. it's well i'm supposed to do this and then i'm supposed to that that, Mm -hmm. and it's supposed to look like this and that's by accident or default or this idea that you've got this someday goal and That's all it is. It's just a wish thinking you're not going to fall into it. It's not going to just happen, right? That's by accident or default. 
and then three words that will change your life live by design. Mm -hmm. And we all see the create a life you love, create a life you love. You you can't until you design it first. It's like a builder. They cannot create a house until they've designed it. So you have to know what you want. You can't create a life you love if you have no idea what that looks like. And it doesn't look the same for everybody, right? So this design piece, like it goes back to you are a creator. You get to design the thing. Mm. And then you get to go actually build it and create it. So powerful. That's by far my favorite, favorite quote that I, I really try to embody every single day. I absolutely love that quote. And I love the daily message. And it's interesting because like my husband knows to expect it now too. Like I, he doesn't listen to it every day, but like if we're in the car, I'm like, oh wait, Julie's daily message is in the app, you know? And it's so nice to just have that like right, ready to go. Um, my, my kids, my kids aren't quite sold yet, Julie, but I'm getting them there. But every once in a while, I'll play, I'll play you in the car, like on the way home from school. And they're like, this again? Like, Julie again? <laughs> <laughs> but it's just so nice that it's so convenient and it's like right, right at your fingertips when you need, uh, you need to hear something and you always know what, exactly what to say. So it's, and it's that perfect. is so intuitively downloaded because I care so much about each and every person, all three of you, everyone <laughs> in there. It's like, I just know, I know where people are at. I get it. And it's, that's the mental gym. You know, I'm like the mental gym coach. Like I'm like perfect. the trainer telling you to keep doing the rep. <laughs> Same thing in there. <laughs> so how, how can people um, connect with you, Julie, and find find out more about the society? Yes. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. If you're listening to this, like I I, I want no no stone turned unturned here. Like just reach out directly to us. Email mm -hmm. us support at juliesecurity.com. Let us know what big goal you're working towards or kind of what came up for you listening to this episode. And I will send you something that will be powerful based on what you say. I've got like some cool uh, articles. I've got some different things we can share, maybe some podcast episodes. So just tell us, like reach out directly, right? I'm not going to put you in a funnel. Just reach out to us, okay? Just like email us at julie, at support at juliecrd.com. Let us know what was your biggest takeaway from this and what was coming up for you? Did you get some kind of intuitive hit? Do you have this mm -hmm. that's happening for you? Email us and we'll help direct you in the right way based on what you share with us. Awesome. And we'll have that information in the show notes also for you guys. Yes, that's so wonderful. Julie, thank you so much for coming on with us today um, and just sharing your heart and sharing your vision um, for so many women, um, because we know that the three of us, our lives have been changed and will keep changing and um, just doing so much more for other women um, and paying it forward, right? And having that servant's heart of sharing what we've learned with you. So thank you. Well, that's what's so cool. Like each of you are torchbearers out into your world. So I just love it. And I just love what you're doing. So thank you so much for having me on. Yes. Thank you. Thank Julie. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>